Okay, this time we're looking at a um, section of the spectrum that again includes uh, wide FM broadcast band. It's, it's this section here. Um, wait a minute, let me check. Uh, 20. Okay, we're at 10 megahertz per division. So, you know, about 32, 33 megahertz wide. So that, yeah, that's about right. But anyway, I, I know for a fact this is what it is, and this carrier here uh, is a local public public service in, in the VHF range, about 155 or so, 155 point. Uh, I actually identified it earlier. I'm not sure what this is. I haven't really checked it out or looked into it or anything yet. Um, but whatever it is, it's about 10 megahertz wide. Oh, you see that spike? That's the control channel for uh, a trunking group, local trunking group in the VHF uh, range of the spectrum. I uh, actually uh, demodulated that with my uh, ICOM while I watched it simultaneously uh, earlier. So I saw the control channel go up, I heard the data, and then, uh, like for instance, right now it's happening. Okay, it just dropped. And I actually was able to correlate the uh, trunking signal with uh, what was seen in the screen. And for many people, it's just uh, another day at work. But for me, it was pretty exciting. Now, uh, today, what I want to do this and this for this video, I have this FM notch filter, and I never really understood why it didn't say. 88 to 108, or it, I don't know why it did, did not have the uh, frequencies it covered covers, but it seems to be a pretty good uh, filter, and I always used it. Well, I mean, didn't use it a lot, but from time to time, it saw some use with uh, frequency counters when I was searching for for uh, near field signals, and um, nearby broadcast stations would desensitize the. Uh, frequency counter or rece uh, search receiver or whatever I was uh, messing with. Uh, it's mainly good for urban areas and places where there's going to be more uh, broadcast stations or if you happen to live next to a tower that could be a real problem. You might want to have a, a bunch of these um, uh, on, on your on your antenna but in, in series with your antenna inputs and the uh, front, front end of your rigs or, or whatever you're protecting. So I won't talk anymore but uh, about that. So let's go ahead and do the test. Got the disc cone again. It's the uh, MFJ 1868 disc cone antenna. Let me, uh, okay, got the filter attached. Stand by while I insert this in the analyzer. Actually, that's good enough. Okay. And you notice we still have the. Uh, oh, there goes that data burst for the control channel for the trunking. Oh, it's gone. And uh, there's that other uh, unknown grouping of frequencies. I'm sure if I thought about it, I could figure it out. Or it could be local um, QRM from my lab here, all the computers and different power supplies and stuff that I have uh, plugged in. Um, oh, there goes the data again. Okay, so let's see. Um, it looks like this filter has completely blocked uh, the uh, broadcast band. Let me remove the disc cone from the back of this carefully. Don't want to stress my... Uh, Analyzer, connector. Just bear with me while I do this. Okay. Plug the disc cone back in. Make sure you can see the screen while I do it. And voila! What do you know? Our radio stations are back.
So it looks like this Stridsberg Engineering notch filter really does its job. And I've always wanted to do this. And uh, was finally, after really quite a while, able to uh, do this with, try it with a real spectrum analyzer. For, I knew this would be fun, but I uh, thought I would share it. That's it.